It's the Flow Friday night sports show. Western Air Netball, big weekend for our EP netballers. Not only games on the Saturday, but on the Sunday as well. And joining me on the line, the well-travelled Rihanna Freeman joins me on the line right now. Rihanna, how are you? Oh, 30 mils of rain in the rain gauge this week, so I'm feeling good. Say that, 30 mils? 30 mils, I tell you, out at Kaka. Gee whiz, so you haven't seen hubby for most of the week then, I imagine? Like I said, happy days here. <laughs> well, crops going in, beautiful, that's good to hear. It is very good to hear. Uh, another win for the West Coast Hawks is good to hear as well uh, in Western Air Netball, but we're not going to talk about that off the top. First of all, we're going we're gonna to work back from Sunday. Let's talk about... Uh, the Western Air girls who went down to Lock, part of the Lock Regional Carnival. First of all, what uniforms did you wear? We were still wearing green and gold. I don't think there'll be any new colours or new uniforms until next season. Just uh, currently concentrating on getting girls on the court and um, and all those sorts of things. So uh, there was quite a few girls for the first time in their green and gold, and I must say they're all happy to put on the uniform and, and put their best foot forward for the day. Well, I, I'm, I'm a little biased when I say this, and I don't care. Um, but I've always said the green machine uniforms in the footy and uh, the girls, the Western Air uniforms in the netball, I reckon the Western Air uniforms are the best of the lot. Um, so I don't care what anyone else thinks about that. Certainly better than that maroon strip. Can't handle that. Um, <laughs> well, it's nothing more, there's nothing more Australian, is there? The old green and gold. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, of course, uh, my old leanings to uh, uh, Western Districts in there as well. But I love the green and gold. Uh, and it was good to see you girls in lock going really well on uh, a court where green Green and gold is, uh, well, it's fairly prominent most of the time there at Locke. Absolutely. Um, look, these girls, they had only really had one training together. And uh, I was really stoked with how they performed. We met Eastern Air first and went down to the I think uh, everyone was a bit timid and weren't really uh, putting their heart and soul into the game while they were finding their feet. But uh, second up, I think we'll just concentrate on this game when we come up against Port Lincoln. Um, and it was actually a really well-matched team. They've got some brilliant players in that Lincoln team. Um, Gemma Seal, for one, she does a lot of damage in goal defence. But we actually had a win against them by two. It was a cracking wow. game. And um, got to give a couple of mentions. Uh, Taylor Collins was a bit of a late entry to the team. And what else was she, um, did she perform on Sunday? She was fantastic. She was quite tall. She was played up both goalkeeper and goal shooter. Um, and she was uh, fantastic on the day. Alana Beard outstanding in goal defence. She actually made the top 10 of the carnival along with um, Sophie Kellett, who's a goalie and she plays both ends and she also made top 10 of the carnival. So uh, a fantastic team, very versatile and I think uh, just that one win and Sunday's game is just a stepping stone for Country Carnival. Yes, it is. Uh, Coming up in uh, less than a couple of weeks' time now over here in Adelaide. How do the junior representative teams go? So it looks a little bit different lot this year. Normally it's just a 17s, 15s and 13s. I think there's only a two or three wins amongst all of those teams. Um, but the girls got a lot of experience. They had a great day. Um, there's definitely some fantastic netballers amongst all those teams. And again, I think that uh, that will be a stepping stone for Adelaide. I think they'll have a training next Sunday and get a little bit more time under their belt, gel a little bit better and hopefully get some more success in Adelaide. Well, that was Sunday out of the way. So we'll move back to Saturday's match. Matches now, club matches on the Saturday. And uh, we will start by having a look at the A grade match between Kinibba and Sajuna Blues. Now, Sajuna hosted this, and uh, well, they dominated basically from the opening whistle. They won very comfortably, 65 to 17. So, Kinibba, as we know, have got some real problems inside their goal circle. But uh, Sajuna Blues, uh, well, they, uh, they exploited that. They did, and I'm not sure whether Taylor was playing uh, as a defence or a goalie. I do know Kniba didn't have Tracy, so she's generally their goal attack and a beautiful player. Actually reminds me a little bit of Sophie Kellett, the way she plays, so that would have been a massive out for them, but Blue's certainly happy with a 48 goal win. Uh, Wirrella had another big win as well. This surprised me, the margin. They took on Western United, and they blitzed them uh, 77 to 31 at Bomberland. Uh, they absolutely wiped the floor with the Tigers. 
They did. Poor Westies have had a few injuries, so I think their A grades look different. In saying that, Wirrella don't have Hayley Webb, so she's had surgery on her Achilles and uh, she's in a moon ready to recover. So they actually took Sophie Keller out from goal attack into the fence and um, those who know her know that she can play both in and plays beautifully. So I think uh, she was vital in their defence, stopping ball with here, there and everywhere and then having Emma up the other end to finish it off uh, had a beautiful game. So 46 is a massive margin, but Wirrella would be really happy with that. Um, and your West Coast Hawks should be pretty happy as well, taking on Thevenard. Uh, pretty good opposition in this game, but uh, the Hawks did enough. 50 to 36, another win in the win column for the Hawks girls. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lindsay, I was going to say wholeness, Lindsay Denton played on Saturday uh, in goal defence for a couple of quarters, and I think that was uh, good to have her back on the court in goal defence. She's such a beautiful defender and reads the ball so well, so she definitely um, made things a little bit harder for our goalies. We had young Chloe Evans play, I think it was her second game of the year, up in A grade, and she played wing defence, and uh, she was outstanding with defence, put lots of pressure over the ball, and, and made it hard for the Seve girls to get it in, so 14 goal win, we're happy with that, and we'll absolutely take that one as you should uh, that leads us to what's coming up this weekend and we will start again with your girls who are coming off a win Sejuna Blues coming off a big win this will be at Streaky Bay you guys are the hosts and uh, well the Blues crew will come down the highway this should be a cracking game of netball this one Absolutely, and it's our first game in the, for the year um, in Streaky Bay, so things are looking uh, very nice in Streaky, and it'd be nice to host the Blues in town. Um, after seeing, again, I've mentioned the name so many times today, but um, Taylor play on Sunday. I'm looking forward to the matchups there. Um, we are looking pretty good in the A grade. Things are starting to get nice and settled. Um, yeah, I think that Hawks would go in favourites for this, and look, I am going to tip us for this one. I think we're looking really good at the moment. And Blues with a few changes since we last seen them. So it's be interesting to see how that plays out. So you what else is interesting? This next game at Penong. Western United at home to Kniba. Now, Kniba, if they can get some goal-scoring power inside that circle, aren't without a chance here. But, I mean, Westies start at fa- as favourite you would expect at home. But uh, if they've got some injuries, then uh, this isn't as secure as it normally would be. Yeah, that's right. Well, we had um, Chloe Etridge plays in the A grade for Westies, and so she plays goalies at club level because uh, they're a bit short on goalies at the moment. She actually plays defence uh, at association level, and she can do some damage. She reads the ball beautifully. So depending on whether she's in goals or defence, but either end, she does really well. Um, Nakia Skinner's been running through the centre for Westies, and she played some really good netball on Sunday as well. So um, although they've had a few injuries and got a few out, I would still be tipping Westies to come away with a win against Kniba. And uh, this uh, last game should be fairly interesting as well. Thevenard gave more than a yelp against your girls last week. Uh, they'll need to do that again. The uh, the Bombers are flying. They're top of the ladder, undefeated, at home. Uh, it all points to another Wirral win. It does. Look, um, Sarah Evans and uh, Emma played on Sunday, and I have not seen Emma work that hard in a very long time. I think probably at club level, uh, as disappointing as going to be for everyone here, I think she's probably only working at 40 or 50%. She only sort of does what she has to and does it very well, I must say. But um, she moved beautifully on Sunday and she's really on fire at the moment. I think uh, if anyone wants to stop Wirrella, that's where they need to start. But uh, I would be tipping Wirrella to come away with a really good win on Saturday. Yep, I agree. And that's where we'll leave it today. Uh, another interesting round of matches ahead this weekend. Uh, Rihanna, uh, all the best to you and uh, your crew hosting Sejuna, and we'll catch up with you again next weekend to find out how you went. No worries. Looking forward to